So I'm going to just tell you what the bundle model is. And what the bundle model is, is a bunch of methods, which I'm not going to talk about now. I'm just going to hide them for a moment. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. I can't hide them for a moment. And a bunch, of mo uh, a bunch of fields. And the fields are actually like Django's way of saying, hey, this is a persistent data in a database. Um, so a bundle, there are a couple of types of fields. Like you can have numbers, integers, like floating point numbers, decimals. This, Typical stuff that you find in every database, and Django has an abstraction for each of these. Of course, this is, this is a very well documented, but we practically use a few of them. Um, we use like date time here, boolean here, character field here. There are two kinds of string fields. Like a character field is like in practice, it's very like there is some difference on the database side, and there's also a text field. But in practice, it's like a one line of text, if you use character field, and if you say text field, it's going to be like a text area. Um, but the key thing is actually foreign key, because this means this is like a relation to another model, <coughs> and Django allows you to forget about, you know, doing joins and stuff like that, and just do like bundle dot bundle stream, and I'm already in the bundle stream object, I can access its attributes directly. So for example, for these bundles here, uh, let's go to the demo again. I'm just going to display something to show you how easy it is to reach out through, through this object, you know, uh, oriented uh, API. I'm just going to say it is in okay, stream bundle bundle stream. Right, I just said bundle the bundle stream. And it's gonna actually, this is behind the scene, it did a join. We didn't have to worry about that, right? And I can do that in a template. I don't even have to read code to do it. I can actually, this is actually the default rendering of an object, but I can, I can say that I can access a path, like the path name attribute directly if I want to, right? So this is the same thing because coincidentally the default rendering of a bundle stream is its path name. But I could kind of say, oh, there, I don't know. Admin. So this is very flexible, very easy to use. Okay. okay so you, you assess the relationship. Yes, this is just like so trivial to go across joints. So compare that to those miles and miles of SQL you, you have to write in those XML files. So this is good stuff. This is the biggest advantage in practice, here and here. If you're going to compute something, I don't know, go across all the benchmark runs, like you find a specific test run, like go across all the samples in it and average them out, Hey, that's two liner here. It's like one liner, to be honest, because average is built in Django, so it's just one liner. Um, and this is so much better than, and so much easier to understand than anything you can write in row C. Okay, going back here. To be honest, the best way to do it is to just branch dashboard and read this a little bit. Uh, it's truly, it's quite easy because this is declaration. I didn't write some magic code here. It's just. <coughs> Stuff. So we have foreign keys, we have date times, and the model is what you, what you probably <coughs> like. It's a little bit different than what is in the JSON file, but all the data is there. It's just like arranged a little bit differently. But it's not really interesting. Test runs more interesting. So you, you say you have methods. Inside. Methods, yeah, because this is a class, so I can have my model that's unknown. Uh, okay. It's a function. Yeah, it has functions, and you can actually call functions from a template. The only thing is that the method has no, cannot have any arguments. Ah, no, uh, right, because in those templates, <coughs> Django has this philosophy of this like separating templates away for the designers and keeping the Python files for the software engineers. So if you are to add like arguments to those templates, uh, oh, sorry, arguments to methods method calls in the templates. I don't know. I dislike that sometimes, but. It's what Django gives you, right? Okay, so the test run is, I guess, a little bit more interesting because it's always the starting point for a lot of things we have. So it has like clicks to test, to the bundle, uh, to all the fields like UIDs and stuff like that. It also has some magical. Oh, that's very good. So I don't. I'm not going to write any more Python for a while, but I'm going to like show you a lot of data here. So we listed bundles here, right? Just one because we did this filtering trick. I'm just going to continue with that. I'm just going to say for test run in bundle test run test runs I'm going to list all the test runs in that bundle. I'm going to see uh, test run. 
need to decide how to prosecute this attack. We cannot easily operate this microphone. Oh, yeah, right. So it's something that's a very and I'm going to list all the test runs in that run. And that bundle. Maybe that doesn't happen. I don't know. I'm just going to zig and filtering for a second because they're using that machine that it doesn't show up. The goal is to allow you to show, like just to show you how to browse the whole thing. Okay. So this bundle didn't have any test runs. This bundle didn't, has one test run. It's right here. Excellent. Now, Let's go and continue this, this exercise. I'm going to say for this test run, list all of the results. Okay, it's going to be a little bit hard to probably see in a second. I'm doing this for a reason, so just bear with me for a second. Okay. Hmm. Is this like bogus and has no results? What is this? Okay, so this unfortunately could be a typo. Okay, but the exercise proves is this. Hey, bundle doesn't have anything that says it has test runs. There's no like foreign key to, to test runs. I'm just going to show you what happens with that. Reason. So, so I'm just teaching everyone how to use Django as well. No, it doesn't. Because there's a reverse view. And Django actually constructs this, this, those ghost objects for you. So if you have a model that has a foreign key to another model, the other model has this additional attribute that links to the collection of the, the first model. And this is exactly what we did here when I said for test run in bundle test runs all. So bundle doesn't have a collection of test runs. There's no field in the table or anything like that. There's no Python code that shows this. Class bundle. There is no test runs here, right? This is it. This is no test runs. But every foreign key has a reverse relationship. So you may be confused, like, oh, I'm at the bundle now, I don't know how to go deeper, right? There's a reverse re relationship for each foreign key. This is true only if they have a one-to-one relationship. Right, for one-to-one well, one is not used by foreign key. Foreign key is like one-to-many, because, oh, one-to-many. Foreign key is in the way that the other relations can, like, you can, right, but there's different fields called one-to-one. <coughs> Different, but also it has it adds a magical field that shows up at the other end. So I'm just going to show you that the test run test run class has a bundle field, and the related name is test runs. The related name is essentially the magical thing that appears in the other model that allows them to go through the collection of these things. So this is very useful. Yeah. Right.